So thank you for having me for your meeting. I want to talk a little bit about the MBS plugin, take your questions and show you a few things in the plugin. So let's start. Um, you may have downloaded the plugin, you may get a folder like this, where you find the, the Mac, the Windows, the Linux, the iOS plugin, and then you install the plugin. And then you may go into FileMaker So you may uh, open the preference folder and you see our preferences for the plugin where you see all the little features we have for the Mac developers about syntax highlighting, variable check, and I want to show a few of those features if you like. So let's just create a database, a sample database from FileMaker and go into the script workspace. And I'm not sure if you notice, but this is a bigger font. Because we, we have this little setting here where you can pick a custom font and a custom font size. So I can create a new script. And I can put in some steps. And the plugin has a couple of rules on how to how to color the script steps. So you may notice that the set variable without any variable is orange. But if I put in an assignment, it gets uh, in this case purple because there is a rule to say if the set variable has, uh, has uh, a variable name, it goes well purple and otherwise orange. The perform script goes red unless you, you pick uh, a script. Then it's blue and here are the conditions where you can just type something. We have blue So when I click on, on the condition here, if, you see that the other parts of the condition will turn uh, blue. So we have there a, a light blue background to show you the other parts of the, of the same uh, condition. And I can nest that, so I can put another if there, and I can put a loop inside. There's a loop there. So if I click on the loop, uh, it will show me that this exit loop belongs together and this loop, this end loop belongs to this loop. And same with the end if and here, if, else, if, end if works wonderful. May be very useful for you to find uh, uh, yourself around. So then we have a variable check. So I can define a variable, test, everything is fine. Now I use the variable test somewhere. Let's say I make here some other assignment and I, I type test with 2t on the end and the plugin will show me an error. This variable name has not been defined anywhere. So yeah, I can I can fix that and now the variable name is, is noticed by the plugin and so the step is no longer red. Sometimes we have a few steps in FileMaker where the plugin may not know whether whether it's a whether the target is a variable, a field, uh, is an input or an output variable. And for that case, um, you may want to um, tell the plugin that this is a, a variable name. So if the plugin, oh, this works. <laughs> I wanted to show you a case where it didn't, didn't work. So let's say here, dollar file. 
So the plugin tells you that dollar file is not found. Also, also it's it's a target here, so it's an assignment. And for that case, uh, you can do um, declare the plugin. It's a variable, uh, and then the plugin will see. Okay, that's a valid name. I'm not sure. Is any one of you using that to find misspelled variable names? Yeah, by the way, if you can't read the text, you may notice that we have a plus button. So let's continue. If you want to copy a script and paste it to your favorite form site, you can just use our copy button here and go to a text editor. Where's my text edit? The other screen. Okay, and you can just paste it. The plugin will um, retain the colors and add a little comment here to tell you which script name from which file. If you have a CMS, So if you if you have a CMS uh, on, a, on your blog post and you need HTML, you can use the option key and press the copy script text button and then you get this HTML representation with all the CSS to get well, a similar text as HTML. Let me show the preview. So looks the same and uh, may be handy for pasting it somewhere in a blog post. So then we have here a little search feature. So let's say I'm looking for something for if, and you see all this color, uh, these lines with an if turn into yellow. This search, this, uh, you can, uh, this multiple search words, so you can say if and else, and we find this line. And you can actually uh, click between, um, let's say go, click through your scripts and see everywhere where the text is matching. Sometimes uh, we, we have long scripts, so we may tell someone, please take a look at line 15. So we jump to line 15. So we have here go to menu. Next we have, a context menu. The context menu allows you to first copy things like copy the content of this list, which well copies just the text. You can copy the selection, which can be handy if you just want to well copy some lines into a, an email. You can copy values. Uh, you can sort, well, sorting doesn't work here well, uh, but here you can sort, no, not here, um, later, later you can sort. <laughs> so you have all your normal enable, disable, cut, copy, paste, and I put those at the menu because the, hey, why doesn't it work? Oh, no, it works, strange. So I, I put those in the context menu because this is a, a shorter move than going all the way up to the menu and finding here the disable menu command. Then it shows me how many lines I have and those snippets here are all uh, self-defined. I did a lot of tests here as you see and got a lot of commands. So let's say I make a new script and now all our scripts um, should have some kind of header. So I can just click this and get uh, some lines edited. So this is standard template for a new, fun for a new script. And for example, you can also have here uh, maybe a loop. So we just copy and paste useful script steps. Um, 
stored in, in uh, preference on the plugin. We can also do um, by name. So we have we have here a search command where you can search in a script and let's just see dollar, let's say counter. Let's see, does something happen? Oh, I had to select the lines, sorry. So select them. Um, dollar index, dollar counter for place. And so here's the original, and uh, this is a modified copy by the plugin. And for the context menu here, you can actually define those yourself. And we have a couple of predefined, and there are a few people who made example databases with useful scripts uh, for this context menu. Any questions so far? So in general, this is like we would copy and paste. And if you paste something where the ID doesn't match any ID in your database, FileMaker will, will show you that the field is not found. So it's, it's just like if you would do copy and paste yourself. Uh, it's, it's due to the zooming here. So the, the line numbers are drawn by FileMaker with a fixed distance. And when, when the plugin uses the zoom feature, you see that we get less numbers here on the on the left side because FileMaker does query the the list here how many entries it has. But if I click here somewhere, so I click on this line and the breakpoint will show up for line eleven, but line eleven is actually showing here. So while it doesn't look nice, I can't do anything about it. Um, but it still works. So I can click here to, to toggle the breakpoint and it will just not show at the right spot. Yeah, the Windows-based people, I'm, I'm so sorry. I tried for years, I, I can't do anything on Windows. It's all custom drawing by FileMaker. But this is possible on macOS because FileMaker uses standard system controls, which the plugin can uh, work with. So we can actually do things like here, add our own callback function to be called by the system if the selection changes. So we can look what's the current entry in the list. We can see, oh, it's loop. And we have internally, of course, a list of all the localizations for loops, so this will work in French too and in Spanish. And then we can look through the lines and find the matching end loop or exit loops lines and do that. Okay, uh, let's go to something else. Let's say we go to managing databases. This, a, this may be a dialog you use quite often. And the first thing is we can show you the IDs for your fields, if you like. This can be turned on and off, and the plugin will add an extra column here to well, show you the IDs of the fields. Once you have this list open here, you can, of course, use our context menu to well copy the list. If you need a list of script steps, uh, I don't know, a list of your database fields, you can copy that. You can actually uh, make a, a spreadsheet and paste it here, and you see you get uh, columns into the spreadsheet. We can do cut, copy, paste, select all. We see how many we have selected. And here the sort should work, so I can uh, select them all and can say sort, and you see we sorted them alphabetically. The next thing is you can press Command F here, and you get a search field. So if you know there is a timestamp somewhere, but you don't know where it is, you can just go over all the entries with Command F or Command F is the find field, Command G is the next one, or you use the navigation here and just go and find things. 
Any questions about that? Okay, so this is for the fields. The same works here for the tables also. I don't expect you to have hundreds of tables here. And you can show the uh, table occurrence ID here. And then we have the relationship graph. And for the relationship graph, we put a, a search field here on the bottom right. And you can just uh, pick something. Assignment. So if I press return key, it starts the search, it finds it, it highlights it. Works very nice. I can even um, type here. So I can just type I and it will show me the entries which match the subtext. So SS is in assignments and in uh, assets. So this may be useful if you have a big graph here. Yeah, if, if you have uh, several, let me just make two. So as assignments, so I can go to the first one, it goes to the next one, goes back to the first one. So just don't press too often a uh, return key, otherwise you click the OK button here. <laughs> but you can jump between several of them. So, what can we do next? Uh, we can go to, what else do we have in FileMaker? We have a data viewer. Okay, so here's the data viewer in FileMaker. Uh, let's see, oh, I don't have any entries here. So let's make just a little dummy script to create a few entries. So let's say we have a local variable. We have, a global variable. Let's say we have, we need fields. Do we have a global field? I don't see one. Test global. Oh, so, um, let's create a global field real quickly. So we set a field. Description. Test. And that's a global field. Okay. Give me another line to stop. Let's see, is my script still there? Yeah, it is. Click debug. So, okay. I have the script. I can step through. I now have a few entries here. If you click on the title bar here, you can bring the data viewer to the front. You see here your entries. If the font doesn't suit your needs, you can press Command plus to make it a little bit bigger. If you have too many fields here, you can actually hide a few. We have Command option F to hide the fields and command option G to hide the global variables. So, uh, and we have a list of all those shortcuts on the block in an article if you need them. Uh, the same hotkey. So command option F or G, F, G, you can show and hide them as needed. Uh, shortcuts, so let's see here. Yeah, here's a list. So we just had this here. Command Shift F, show and hide fields and G for the global variables. So this may be handy. <laughs> for you. Next thing is you may want to search here. So again, you can you can search here and assets and you can just find your entries. Dollar A, yeah. Can be handy. So in the script debugger, well you can here. Hello? 
it searches in all the visible text. So next thing is here in the script debugger, you can of course search, you can zoom, you can copy the script if you need, and if you move your mouse over a variable name, the plugin will show you what's in the variable name. So $a is a text, $b is also a text, and this field is a text, it's empty. And this is a field with this. Oh, we don't have a record, that's, that's why it's empty. Um, let me just show you the why the variable type is important. Let's say we have a number and the number is one, two, three, and we have another thing which looks like a number, but it's not. Oh, give it a different name. So if I go to the debugger, I can now see here that the plugin will tell me that dollar num is is it's looking like a text, uh, like a number. One, two, three, it looks like a number, but if it's internally a text, FileMaker will treat it differently in, in things like a compare. And you may need to use get as number to convert it to an actual number with the same content. So that's the reason we show you the data type here of the value. And if you have a lot of variables in your calculations here, you may find it handy to have a way to see the value without scrolling through the data viewer. Okay, that's for the debugger. Do we have any questions so far? Otherwise, let's take a look on this calculation dialog we saw. So FileMaker has a dialog to specify calculations and you may use it every day and you may have some calculations, one plus two, and the plugin can actually do a syntax check. Let's cause an error. So here's a syntax error, and you see the plugin also shows you the bracket in, in red because the bracket is not correct. And you may notice that we have a bigger font here <laughs> too because, well, for presentations, I like to use uh, the plugin feature for the font size. The plugin also shows you your, your line number and column position, and if you select some text, it shows you how long the selection is. So remove the syntax error, and we recently got an execute button here, so you can execute your calculation while you are developing it. So you may just think about something like here, or make some kind of calculation. Oh, I have to use comma here for my computer. Oh, sorry, this is a, it's maybe a summary field. Um, but you can do any calculation you like uh, and just have it execute. And as you may notice, uh, the, the plugin highlights the matching bracket if you click on a bracket. So you may notice which bracket belongs to which other bracket. And this even works within a text. So if you have, uh, let's say you have some SQL, select star from my table where, say we put something in brackets and say, Deleted is zero, and uh, so it works even inside uh, a string, and it doesn't care for the for the brackets outside of the string. So I can click on this one, and it doesn't highlight any matching one because there is no matching one. And even if I put one here outside, this will not find the outside bracket. So it may be useful for you. Any questions here?
Yes. Yes, you can set it. Uh, we can take a look later on the rule set. So we, we have a standard def uh, rule set for you. We have actually one for light colors and one for dark colors. So if you use dark mode, you get a different set with uh, lighter colors. So what's next? Ah, yeah, custom functions. You may all like to use custom functions from time to time. And let's say I make here my new create function. It get a few parameters, a, b, c. And the function, let's say, does a plus b multiplied by c. And now you may have a function. You may think about, well, I can do a syntax check here. OK, that's correct. I can execute it. I get nothing. And uh, we thought about this, and we got you a way to define a test case here in the in the function right away as a comment. And so you can actually define values for all your parameters. The plugin will see this comment and takes this assignment, and you can use it uh, to set the parameters. And then we calculate you this expression and show you the result. So when you write your own custom functions, you can um, provide some test cases here. You can have several values, and um, we, we pick the, the last line. So you can just disable it by making it a regular command and get back the other values. So you can have several values here, and those can actually be calculations. So I can, again, put here some sinus n to get a number. So this can be a calculation on its own, if you want. And you have a test case here. And yeah, a couple of people think it's useful, especially that you can just check syntax without um, clicking the OK button and, and trying to leave the, the dialog. So let's let's take a look again on this preference dialog. We have the syntax highlighting, we have the blocket highlighting, we have the variable name checks, we have the search box. So you can disable enable all these features. And I haven't, if I haven't mentioned it already, all those features are free to use. You just need to install the plugin. Context menu. Ah, Columbus. That's something. Columbus is something I need to show you. Minimum font size also very useful. And because my MacBook has a um, touch bar, I actually have here a setting to block the escape key unless I press option escape. This prevents me from losing a, a calculation while typing and while hitting the ESC key without wanting to close the dialog. You can pick your favorite font and uh, JetBrains Mono is a special font for developers with a few extra things uh, like showing the equal signs and a greater sign as, as an arrow, for example. I wanted to show you the Columbus, yeah. So let's say you go and you define a layout. Um, you may have this Columbus here, and you may be annoyed that the Columbus is a small every time you open the dialog. But if you have the plugin installed, the plugin will remember the Columbus for you. So it stays the same between uh, opening and closing the dialog several times. Also, of course, uh, Command F, the search feature is, is there. It's available in over 20 lists within the FileMaker user interface. So whether you search a securities entry, uh, layout, a custom function, well, whatever you search, uh, it's in all the dialogs. Yeah, value list, find type, oh, it finds it. I think I 
showed you a lot of, of those features. So maybe I show you the example database for the syntax coloring. Okay, so in, when you download the plugin, you get this folder with examples and there are a lot of examples. And there is one for the syntax coloring here. This one has a list of, of rules. Oh, well, that's not it. But there's a nicer one. We have uh, one provided by Russell Watson, FM Syntax Colorizer. And he had the idea for all the features. <laughs> so he came up with a huge list of rules. And based on those are the default rules in the plugin. So here is defined that an else script step in English will show in blue and else if it's with empty brackets will show in brown. Um, and then you have perform script and so on. And you have a few more special rules Like here, if, if there are special conditions, you get different colors. Uh, let's go down. You see, it's a long list of, of definitions. And if you have a comment, for example, which starts with, with the text fix me, it turns the command line in red with to do and here in what's it? Yeah. The plugin does a colorization and you can configure it with, with, with plugin commands. So, yeah, it's been there since 2012, I think. So we have here in our function list, we have the syntax coloring things. You see, there's a lot of things you can, can change in the plugin and there's a important one is add tag. There you define uh, a selector, a text, and a color. So you, let's go to the example. So you can, for example, say in a script step, if, if its command is, well, set variable, this is German, um, pick this color with hex notation, or just if you're in a formula and the round bracket color should be blue. And you can just go to the data viewer, you can put this line in, press evaluate, and the next time the, the script workspace redraws, it will change the color for the new rule set. So like you can you can define special colors for script steps which contain the missing field line to be red. That's actually what we have here. There's a table missing, field missing, function missing, not compatible. Those all turn red by default. You can have these different colors for the comments. You can have a color for um, global variables. You can actually give special global variables a specific color. So you can distinguish them between your normal globals and your special globals. You can, for the for this calculation dialog, you can, of course, color your brackets, your uh, ensemble, your digits, uh, equal signs, you can give every FileMaker function here a specific color if you like. Um, yeah, and here yeah, variables. No, no, bold doesn't work because uh, then the plugin would change how wide the function name is, and this uh, doesn't work well with the uh, uh, web for the line web for the. So we, we tried that. It caused a lot of problems. <laughs> so you can define your own rule sets here if you don't like our default. And uh, either you go here and go here and, and take this example database and maybe change your color set. So here are a few color sets predefined. Uh, you can define your own color palette and then assign it to, to your rule sets you like to use. 
or you just write a little script in your own database solution to just tune the few colors you may want to have changed. Like uh, there are some people who like comments in green, some like comments in gray. Um, this is uh, so you may have just your favorite four or five lines to adjust the colors to your needs. Yeah, so this is a database for the colors. Beside those syntax coloring things, we also have, oh yeah, the snippet storage may also be useful. This is an example another user provided. So we can, in FileMaker, copy something, create a new snippet with the, with the XML, and at any point we can copy that back and paste it later. So this can store all your scripts, custom functions, tables, fields, layouts, and for your later use. And this is using the clipboard functions in our plugin to do that. But while I'm at that, where is my, here, yeah, script, workspace, context, menu commands, database. So this, um, Database defines the script steps we had earlier. Let's see, this is um, find sequence error handler. This is, for example, the loop example I had. So we, we have uh, here script steps copied from FileMaker. So you, you copy them in FileMaker. You use here the button to put them in the field as XML. Then uh, this, this code is created automatically from you based on this let statement here, which introduces, uh, uh, well, tells the plugin, um, well, to take the XML, put it on the clipboard, and then run the paste command in FileMaker to actually paste it. So we leverage here existing functionality by the MBS plugin to run any menu command in the FileMaker menu anytime you like. So just let's make a new one for you. Let's say we like, like to maybe say we are use up off. Uh, so let's say we, we want to start every script maybe with a line here, disable user user to cancel script and this may be very useful for us so we go and, and copy it go here make a new entry paste it oh yeah uh, script steps it's not yet using our auto mode so this is already okay always enabled yes install what empty title oh yes um, Allow user upboard. Let's say this is a title. Install. Go to the script workspace again, and now we can add that as often as we want. And you may want to build your own library, and maybe you want to share your favorite snippets for <laughs> with your friends. And this database may help you. But beside all those free uh, developer add-ons, we have actually over 6,000 functions in the plugin. And here with the JSON example, it's I'm not sure which one it does it, but well, build JSON. No, that doesn't. Uh, why is there no example? This one is. Oh yeah, this is here colored already. So you have some JSON. Let's see. So we have a JSON.colorize function where you can pass in some JSON text and get it colored like this here. 
So let's see, I can copy, I can paste, undo and do this without color and then I can run the script to get it colored. We also have this function to turn JSON into HTML so we can show it in a web viewer. We also have a json.format function, so I can just change this and say first format it. And our formatting is a little bit different than the one from our FileMaker. So you can use either the built-in from FileMaker or ours, and then you can use the colorizing in the plugin to colorize your JSON. And this is very useful if you have some let's say developer layout where you show you actually uh, the input and output of your web service calls and then you may see your issues right away. We also have the uh, XML colored so you may have some XML and then you have the colored version with the plugin. Let's see the Oh no, it's it's in the button. So edit the button. And there <laughs> it's not in the button, it's in the field definition. So so here's a colorized call, and we can also here use our format function to actually format the XML. So it, it gets intended. Uh, very useful if you, well, just display it for debugging. Um, we have a lot of other examples, but the key thing I want to talk about is uh, that you usually don't use just one group of functions in the plugin. We have, um, so if you have the list of functions, we have here over a hundred topic lists, a uh, hundred topics. So you usually don't just see one thing as its own, you, you combine them. For example, let's say I have, let's see, I have an example with via, so Windows here. So you may find it interesting that we have functions to talk to a scanner device, a flatbed scanner or an automatic feeder scanner to scan your documents. We have the functions for Mac and Windows and we even have the older train function. So we have three function sets to deal with scanners and you have to decide which one is right for you or maybe you use uh, several, like one for Mac, one for Windows, and when you scan you you may get the pictures uh, scanned. Is it? Um, this is picture, so we, we scan, we get pictures, we get the pictures, we build the PDF, so and then you may combine that with, with our PDF function to actually uh, build a PDF document with all the pages you got from the scanner and in between there you may even use our, our graphics magic functions to work on the image data and in this case here actually check if the page is all white and then skip it. So in this example we combine scanning functions, graphics functions and PDF functions together to one solution to do a job. In this case, getting um, several pages of scanned documents into a PDF document. We may also combine this with our OCR functions to get the text from the PDF and put it in the document. Now, to, get, to take the scanned picture, pass it through OCR and then put the text on it. Uh, I can show you that. So this example here takes 
uh, a picture with some text, to, that's the OCR, and then it places on top of the picture in a PDF document, the actually text, so you can have this PDF, um, you can export this PDF, and you can actually select the text uh, so in the in the PDF you got. So let's jump to regular exceptions. So no, regular expressions. We have here uh, regular expression functions, but I like to show you something new I made in the last weeks, which is data detectors. Maybe more interesting. So this is using uh, special regular expressions under the hood provided by Apple through their frameworks to find useful information in a text like phone numbers, uh, dates, uh, web addresses, uh, postal addresses, as well as emails, email addresses. So we can take an existing text just like Safari or Apple Mail run it through the data detectors and they will tell us where a phone number is or where you find a date or time. And if you if you just need uh, a few normal regular expressions, we also have those, um, like for example, the we have the, the replace, replace all here, where you can just search through a text and replace text with a certain pattern with other text, or you can extract a piece of text. So like here you have a phone number in a text and you have a pattern for, well, some kind of phone number. And then you can find this phone number in the text and get it back to you. Or here for a bank account number. So. So yes, we have regular expressions. Do you have any questions or? Otherwise I may show you an example on iOS. Because I do have here an iOS project ready to run. Okay. So it's launching. I can also open the solution in FileMaker. So this is my example project here in the simulator for iOS. So I have the feature that I can not just preview a document, but actually on the iOS device, annotate it. So I can say I have a PDF or a picture and I can draw on the picture and say this is maybe important here. This is an important piece. And then I can uh, click done and my, my drawings are saved here. So people can use the operation system provided features to mark up a document on the iOS device, like an iPad or an iPhone. And this is by building your own iOS app for FileMaker with the FileMaker iOS SDK. And you only need a few script steps to open this panel to show the document. Here we add a container, we register the script to call it when, when we are done. We show, show the, the panel and when it's dismissed, we ask the plugin if we got a new file and then we just import it into our container field. Anyone like that? This all started 2006. I'm, I'm just a C developer <laughs> basically, which uh, well has a few friends in the Claris community who constantly ask for new features. Oh, well, yeah, um, let me explain. So you can download the plugin. You can uh, just enjoy all these developer features for free. You can play with the plugin features. You may see um, 
see a dialog coming up telling you that the license key is missing if you actually use our, our regular functions. Uh, you can see the price list on the website, of course, and if you like, you can also get a trial key if you like to play with the plugin for a month or two without any annoying dialogues. And then if you want it, you basically pay for the first function and the rest is free. So we really hope you, you like a few of the functions. Okay, uh, going back to the... so. This morning I thought about an example. Um, let's say you may want to have some database watching a folder. Then you may start with using our schedule features to have a script run every few minutes to check a folder. Like here you can, you can have a, a script run uh, at a time after delay so you can say run it after after two minutes and then repeat every two minutes or run a script when the user is idle so you can exit the record. When you when you have the script running you may want to list the files in a in a folder. So you go to our files section and you look for the list function here to, to list you the, the files in a folder. Then you have the list and you may want to go um, to our list functions to actually look on the list, compare it to the, to the items in, uh, in the last list you had, so you see which file names are new. Then you go to maybe the path function to, yes, path there. Yeah. So you add a path component, so you build from the folder path and the file name, you build the final path. Then you may want to check if you if you know the file already. So you go to the hash, to the hash function. Say I need a hash for the file content. Uh, here, like, let's see. No, this is uh, this a digest file. This one. So you say I have a file path. I need a sha five hundred twelve, and you quickly get back the the hash. And then you may use uh, our SQL functions in FileMaker. So you, you have the hash of the file. You may do a little SQL query to, to see if you, if you know this hash already, if there's a record for it. Like you make a select count um, to, to see if you got a record with that. And then you may do an insert record. And you still may notice that you, you did not switch a layout for this. You do this all in the current context, whatever it is. Uh, you create a record in your table and say, we got a new file, we import it and put it in a record. Um, if it's a PDF file, you may go and use our PDF functions. Well, we have PDF kit for Mac and iOS as well as the Dyna PDF functions if you need something cross-platform so it runs on Linux and um, Windows to extract the text. So there's an extract text function. And then you have the text. Yeah. So you combine them. You, yeah. There was a question about the uh, server. So you install the plugin where you use it. We made this graph for you. So if you use FileMaker Pro and perform script on server, you need a server license and the plugin installed on the server. If you only use it local in FileMaker Pro, you need a seeds license. There's also an example on how to automatically install the plugin. So you can install the plugin by a script on all your clients if you need. Yeah, so we have here user guides and there is a section installation somewhere here. Automatically install and there are a few things you may want to know. And then here's a sample script which installs the, the right plugin on the right platform. Yeah. If you have a question, don't, uh, don't hesitate to contact me. You can just email us uh, 
if you have a question and if you find a bug or you have a feature request, yeah, please 